This is the Lake County police car that uh, John Dillinger escaped from the Crown Point Jail on March 3rd, 1934. For the past year, a rare artifact tied to the Hoosier hoodlum has been on display at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Museum. Its owner, a well-known Dillinger historian, Mark Love, tracked down and restored the 1933 Ford V8. During a return visit to 21 Country, Love brought another collectible to share exclusively with us, an item he says is the most iconic of all of them. You could pretty much say it's the most valuable item that has anything to do with Dillinger. It seems like no matter where I go, you know, throughout the years, I've always been asked about the wooden gun. When it comes to John Dillinger memorabilia, there are two artifacts rarer than them all, and they're both tied to a single night in Indiana. On uh, March 3rd, 1934, John Dillinger escaped from the Crown Point Jail, and at that time, he had locked up 32 individuals and escaped in Lily and Holly's car. Historian and collector Mark Love says now he owns them both. The sheriff's stolen 1933 Ford V8 and the fake gun the Hoosier hoodlum used to trick the guards that held him captive. A wood craftsman fabricate a gun for the jailbreak. Then uh, it was smuggled in by uh, Louis Perquet, his attorney. They cut the inside of a Bible to fit the gun and put the gun inside a Bible to give it to Dillinger. The legend goes that Dillinger carved it in his cell, but Love claims that was a lie to cover up the fact that he had help from the inside. And though the Dillinger enthusiast is confident he owns the real wooden escape gun, so too are several others. This article right here was done November 11th, 1934. This is the first article that John Dillinger's father did. He even signed an affidavit with the newspaper company that, that everything he was about to tell them is true, and he actually showed the real wooden gun right here. Now, the reason that his father would always keep this wooden gun is because when Dillinger was at the farm house, he told his father, don't ever get rid of this gun because whenever you're sad, you can, you can take it out and you'll laugh about what I did. So his father did promise that he would never get rid of it and he did keep his word. From there, the collector believed Dillinger's sister inherited the artifact, and it was her son who sold it to the family that Love would buy it from earlier this year. As you can see, this gun is flat on both sides and on the bottom, and is round. This gun right here is completely round all the way around with no flat sides. Your hands have a fingerprint that nobody else has. Wood has a fingerprint of its own. You can't change the, you know, how a piece of wood is made. Um, so as I will show you that it matches this identically. And now this wooden gun is going on the road with its jailbreak companion, as Love remains determined to argue his case on the rare item's authenticity. There will not be any doubt in anybody's mind anywhere in the country, uh, which is which. I, I'm very confident in that. But his primary goal remains the same to share his fascination with Indiana's anti-hero. Back in the day, the, you know, the banks were, the banks were taking away people's homes. Uh, banks were closing, you know, people's money were lost. Uh, you know, people were, you know, very hurt. And here we are, a man uh, was going in and, uh, you know, robbing the banks uh, and doing what he needed to do. Uh, so it was just a little bit of payback, you know, to the public of, of what's been happening to them. I'm happy to see that, you know, that, uh, you know, Dillinger is still in the minds of, you know, people and, and what happened. All right, so uh, we did reach out to the South Shore Convention and Visitors Association, which owns the items of the former John Dillinger Museum in Crown Point. We did not get a response on the authenticity of their wooden gun or Love's claims. There's a lot more to his story and research that we couldn't include in this particular report. But you can find extended interviews and information on our website, WPTA21.com. We'll hope you'll check that out, and we'll be right back.